Hello, I'm First Alert Meteorologist Kevin Phelps. The following compilation of weather coverage is from June 24th, 2013. Our viewing area was under a slight risk for severe weather, which is not out of the ordinary in the summer, but on this day the ingredients came together and a bow echo formed in central Iowa. As the bow echo approached our viewing area, it was clear our viewers would be in for a long afternoon of severe storms and possible tornadoes. And we were on the air before, during and after a tornado tore through the town of Muscatine, unfortunately killing one person. Well, good afternoon from the First Alert Weather Center. I'm meteorologist Eric Maitland. We have a series of severe thunderstorm warnings that have just been issued for portions of the western QCA. Now, this is along a line of some pretty strong thunderstorms that will be continuing to move from west to east through the area as we go through the afternoon. We're getting a, a, a new one actually coming in, Eric. This is for Henry, Louisa, and Washington counties until 3.15 p.m. Uh, and really the area of rotation that they're concerned with is right near Wayland, and this is actually moving east at 50 miles per hour. We do see this happen quite often along the leading edge of these cells, especially as they're raining quite a bit. They're pushing out a lot of air, and you kind of think about this. If you're moving along in the water or you're in a boat and you see right along the side of your boat, you get those little eddies on the side. This is what happens when we have severe thunderstorms that are producing winds up to near 60 miles per hour. You're getting the rain. It's pushing out the outflow. That's going to create the spins in the atmosphere, and this is why we like to call these kind of a, a spin-up tornado, uh, as you may will, and this is actually why they're continuing to issue these tornado warnings. It looks like this will probably happen off and on here probably for the next 30 to at least 45 minutes really getting very close to Highway 61. So if I was on Highway 61 or you know anybody that's traveling north or south on there, call them immediately and tell them you, you're going to want to take cover because that's a line of storms also capable of producing that tornado is also producing winds of 65 miles per hour. And that's enough to tip over any sort of semi that's driving north or south on US 61. And really it can blow your car around as well. So you want to make sure you uh, get uh, undercover here pretty quickly and now, just, there. and now we just got a new uh, tornado warning in Eric as I'm trying to uh, uh, talk to the National Weather Service here on my phone as well as uh, take a look at what we have going on on our radar but we do have a tornado warning now for Muscatine and Scott County until 345 uh, p.m. this is all Doppler indicated and as uh, we s the tornado possibly located near Fairports moving northeast at about 55 miles per hour. And so we do have a report now uh, right off one of our viewer tips. Uh, what looked like a circular rotation was picking up degree right, uh, debris right on Highway 61. This is uh, it, a few moments ago in Muscatine heading east, and it appears to have tore apart the roof of Krieger's uh, auto shop. And we'll uh, certainly follow up on that as we have this report. This comes to us a, a few minutes ago as this system was uh, starting to rotate through Muscatine now as you say moving closer to uh, portions of West Davenport and we're just moments away from getting the latest radar on our Doppler it looks like it's coming back so we can uh, get to that in just a few moments Kevin yeah the uh, another report there for you out of Muscatine County a tornado on the ground with a semi truck overturned on Highway 61 uh, that was at Independence Street near Blaine's Farm and Fleet right, and, and this was... folks is what we call a shelf cloud and this is where you have a rush of air coming out right where that cloud base uh, and between there and the ground and the whole storm itself pushing ahead and this is going to be uh, your first indication that the air, uh, air is going to become much more uh, volatile as the winds really start to pick up under this and we can even see it moving uh, definitely on our sky cam right now. Um, yeah, what I want to show you, there's how we tell you that the rain goes from nothing to something that you won't believe in just a matter of minutes. You see that piece of sky that we're just about to lose on the right and then in the foreground you see the sheets of rain and then look at how quickly the visibility goes to almost nothing nothing as we are just splicing this uh, line of rain in half with our sky cam as it's coming through right now it, and I'm sure that we're going to start to hear it right on yeah, the Yeah and the they studio. just issued a new torn, or a new thunderstorm warning uh, for for the whole Quad Cities metro now Eric uh, that yep. uh, goes until let's see uh, pulls up until 4:15 p.m. Uh, the one thing they did attach to this a possible tornado as they're continuing to see signs of rotation and uh, you know what this is uh, getting pretty serious for areas on the northwest side of the QC metro That's is either leaving the TV6 viewing area or uh, starting to wane somewhat in the leftover rain that we have to finish off the afternoon. So that's going to do it for our storm coverage the right areas now. areas that we are hearing about a lot of damage in at this hour is Muscatine. Danielle McCarthy is live in that area right now where we have reports of roads being closed. We know Highway 61 is a mess right there. A funnel cloud was reported from several viewers there. Danielle, you are on the line with us. What can you tell us? Well, Gary, we just got into Muscatine actually a few minutes ago. Sheriff's deputy we talked to described the area as a total disaster. 
looking at it right now, traffic was diverted off 61 as we were trying to get into the city. We finally got in after we were stuck in traffic for a while. Right now, I'm standing outside the Krieger Collision Center. There's debris all over the place. The collision center itself, there's a wall caved in. The roof is blown off. There's pieces of insulation everywhere. Um, standing in it right now, actually. Uh, firefighters are here outside Calvary Church. There's a reported gas leak that they're checking out. Now, this is just the damage we've seen so far, and we've only been here for a few minutes. So we're going to keep checking out the area, and we'll be sure to keep you updated on what we find out. Danielle, we had heard reports about that church being damaged. Do you say a possible gas leak? Do you see any structural damage from your vantage point? From where I'm standing right now, it looks like there might be some damage on the roof of the church, um, but mostly there's just a group of firefighters out there right now checking out that gas leak. Um, so that's the church. Most of the damage looks like it happened to the Krieger Collision Center. There's light poles down, trees down on cars, um, and the, the roof is just blown to pieces. It's, uh, it's laying everywhere. Yeah, this is a part of Muscatine that has been, been, been hit before. When you were talking with the, the, the officials, and I know it's very early and you're just getting into town, when they say extensive damage, what kind of damage are we talking about? And have you heard any confirmed reports? Because we have heard of, of some injuries there. Have you heard any confirmation of yeah. that? Yeah. We um, we stopped. We pulled over on the side of the road off, after we got diverted off 61 and talked to a sheriff's deputy. Now, he said that there have been two semis that were blown over. Um, both drivers are um, just have minor injuries, nothing life-threatening. He said that there has been a person in town, though, um, who, who was stuck under a roof that collapsed during the storm, and he suffered more severe injuries. And he didn't know um, the extent of that right now, but I'll be sure to find out more and let you know. All right, Danielle, we'll release you so you can go in and collect some more information for us, do some more reporting. We'll check back with you a little bit later in the newscast. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. And, and if we have this video available, let's show it to you now. Uh, we actually had, as this system was coming up to the metro, we had a crew on the other side of it waiting it out in Eldridge. And this is what Mike Ortiz, our chief photographer, saw as it came in and came overhead. Of course, this again, after he was safe in a safe place, came out and this is what he saw, not heading uh, towards him, but going away from him. I believe we have, and there, wow, look at that shot right there. We have Mike Ortiz, I believe, on the phone. And, and Mo, can you you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at it appears to be and I know you you're an expert in terms of you've been shooting here for us for decades what, what did you see today well as you and I had talked like five minutes before and I knew I had to get off the road the clouds that, that I was looking at looked pretty ominous uh, and by the time I parked that sort of cloud was was moving in and it was moving in quick the temperature changed quickly, and um, I knew at that time that uh, I probably needed to take shelter right away. So, um, but I was able to, to, to get some video and uh, then got in and, and got into a safe safe spot where I was able to shoot a little bit of the, the, the wind and rain and, um, and that sort of thing. Hey, We're still waiting for confirmation on whether a tornado was responsible for the damage in Muscatine. Iowa Governor Terry Branstad was in Muscatine today after declaring it a state disaster area. He spent the morning at Creeker's Auto Collision Repair where one employee was injured during the storm and later died. Owner Doug Krieger spoke with KWQC's Amber O'Brien this morning, and he says the entire event happened in what seemed like a split second. Despite the storm's quick approach, he says most employees were able to make it safety in time. What really saved all the employees in that body shop is they got inside a, a cement brick uh, explosion proof room, and they all got in there except for the one gentleman. And if they hadn't got in there, I probably would, probably would have lost every employee. Many local residents are thankful to be safe today. And they are the National Weather Service is confirming that there was a tornado in Muscatine on Monday. We've got video of it. This is from a Muscatine car wash surveillance camera. It's posted now on our Facebook fan page. Watch the upper left-hand corner of the screen. This was when an EF1 tornado with 110 miles an hour wind speeds. It traveled six and a half miles. One person was killed by this tornado. There was also a second tornado in Atkinson, Illinois. This was was also an EF1, which traveled four miles with wind speeds of more than 90 miles an hour. There are no reports of injuries with this one. The National Weather Service is still surveying damage in Orion to determine if there was a tornado there. 
family and co-workers of a storm victim in Muscatine are mourning his loss this morning. The storm on Monday caused the roof of the Krieger Collision Center to collapse on the man. He was taken to the hospital in Iowa City where he later died. Several employees were working at the auto shop. They all managed to make it to a cement room, except